The next delivery of cargo to the International Space Station is due on the Dragon spacecraft that is targeted to launch on March 16th. Uh, that will contain a lot of experiments that are going to do their work inside the station and one big experiment that will be doing its work on the outside of the station. The High Definition Earth Viewing Experiment is part of the next Dragon payload and the uh, HDEV lead engineer, Lori Motes, is with us this morning to talk about that. You're flying four high definition cameras. What's the story behind all of that? Tell me where they go and things like that. That's right. Um, we're flying four different commercial high definition video cameras and our team designed the enclosure and the avionics to integrate the experiment on orbit. Um, we'll be flying in the SpaceX Dragon trunk. Um, that's their exposed facility and we're the first exposed payload and the first powered payload that SpaceX is flying. So it's been exciting to be integrated with them as they've gone through those challenges. That's you in the back of yes, the... Yes, this is a picture of us um, integrated in the SpaceX trunk um, as they've gone, gone through some of our challenges. Um, that's our enclosure and you can see several pockets on, on either side of the camera where the windows, where the cameras peek out. We and had then, a, a close-up view of the, uh, the payload itself. If you could describe for us uh, what we're, it's, it's a big box that has the cameras inside it, I that's guess. That's correct. That that's correct. Um, the since, inelegant way. Since we, <laughs> no, that's, that's a pretty easy way to describe it. We have, um, so you can see the, on the bottom right picture, there's two small, uh, two windows, and then on the left-hand side, and then one window that you can see on the right-hand side. And um, when we pick these commercial cameras, um, they aren't designed for space um, exposure, so we've kind of protected them from the vacuum and the thermal um, environments of space with the, uh, part of our design. And so um, that's what the, the box and you saw the silver right. uh, covering is for, is for uh, protecting the cameras from that part of the space environment. And when you get there, where is this apparatus going to end up? Um, when when we when SpaceX um, docks on orbit, the robotic arm will remove us from the SpaceX trunk and then take us over to the uh, European Space Agency's Columbus module. And then um, this is um, yeah a great picture on the will be installed on the bottom location um, that you see there on their external payload facility. There's like four different platforms that you can see there, um, and the bottom platform is the Nader location um, is pointing Earth towards Earth. Um, so our, all four of our cameras um, will be pointed at different angles towards Earth. We have one camera that will be pointing forward, so um, looking where the ISS is traveling. Um, and then we have one camera that will be pointing straight down into at t exactly towards Earth, and two cameras that will be pointed kind of towards uh, the back where to see where the ISS has been traveling. And they're, but they're all tracking, they're all pointed on essentially the same path so they could track exactly. where the station is flying. So if there was um, a weather event, say like a hurricane, that we wanted to see or, or track, um, we could see if the ISS was going over that event, we could watch it as the ISS is approaching, um, transfer to to the camera and watch it as the ISS is over the event and then transfer and watch as the ISS passes. Now, is the goal here to get a lot of beautiful HD video of the Earth? Um, no, that's certainly um, a good um, side effect, but it's really an experiment. Um, the reason we have four different commercial cameras is we want to see not just um, how these commercial products respond to the radiation environment, the, the cameras themselves, their sensors, and also the integrated system. Um, the products weren't designed to be exposed to the radiation environment of space, so we want to see how, um, as we move forward with part, as NASA's partnering with more commercial entities and with um, uh, as we try to move forward and, and achieve our goals we want to see how that's um, th how robust we can be and to make more intelligent decisions as we move forward you described earlier that the enclosure is in is, is protecting these cameras to some extent but mm -hmm. but not completely I guess that's true yes um, I mean we, we still need we could I, a more robust design would be to put it in a completely enclosed yeah. box but then you wouldn't get very good video would you mm -hmm. so um, so it has to be able to see outside. So um, outside of the space station, you still have the radiation effects. And that's um, the, the video sensors are, are really sensitive, particularly sensitive to radiation exposure. So um, we're actually partnering with uh, university students, and, and they'll be looking at some of taking, recording some pieces of the video data over time from the different cameras and um, 
developing ways to e examine how the video is degrading as the cameras are exposed to more and more radiation. And I want to ask you about the student involvement, but mm -hmm. there, there is a way for people to see the video as it's shot, right, or, or relatively soon. That's after. true. Um, one of our kind of key uh, missions here is it's basically live video streaming. Um, the, the only delay in the system is the delay in downlinking the video from the station to Earth. Um, there is a, a website that is being set up, a Ustream website, mm -hmm. where um, there's the link there um, that once we're installed and powered, it will be streaming the video essentially 24-7. Um, down and so anybody from the public can come and and see the video and link to and see just where the station is. Um, eventually, there's a the, they want to have a kind of a graphic of the world with a, a, an image so you can see up oh, this is where ISS is now and then you can see the actual video and you can see where um, it's headed to correlated to where it's going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so that's uh, that's kind of the image. I think the the link if you go to the link now it's just as video from the NASA website, but. Uh, um, um, but it's it's going to be pretty exciting. You mentioned students a moment ago. There are oh, students yeah. involved in both the preparation and the and, and then the in the experiment after it arrives. Yes, right? that's true. We have um, we've partnered with the University of Houston Clear Lake to um, they'll be maintaining the website and also operating the payload when it's on orbit. It's the payload's pretty autonomous, meaning once uh, once it's installed on orbit and we turn it on, it just kind of cycles through the four different cameras on its own. Um, but you, we do have the option that if we want to change the order that the cameras cycle or how long we sit on any one camera, they can do that um, and make that change. And as time progresses, if, say, one camera finally stops working, we can cycle between three cameras and we can make those sorts of changes. And the students would be doing that effort as well as analyzing the video to see how it's degrading over time. Um, in the actual hardware development itself, right. we actually involved the uh, HUNCH program, which is high school students united with NASA creating hardware. Of course it um, is. <laughs> it's the HUNCH program, so it's uh, high school kids um, that they are coming in with, uh, I mean, it, it's amazing, they're so young, but they're creating hardware, software, and electronics um, that we actually have brackets. Uh, we used, the, they had some mechanical design, and they actually built hardware that is in our box and about to fly. So it's part of how what made us work. So We'll be looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. It ought to be very interesting to see that once it, once it does. The uh, HDF payload scheduled to fly on the uh, Dragon spacecraft. It's launching on March 16th. Lori Motes, thank you. Uh, Lori thank you. is the uh, lead engineer for the uh, HDF payload.